You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Highlights of the news today, Monday, the 14th of May. Two British servicemen killed by those they trained. Campaign to launch to protect our children from Muslim grooming starts high noon, 9th of June. Muslim policeman resigns after security clearance is revoked. Greek politicians running around like headless chickens to avoid Euro meltdown. Even the Germans are unhappy now. Thought for the day, more sex grooming cases come to light, however with a media twist. UK news. The total of British soldiers killed in Afghanistan now reaches 414. Two British servicemen have been killed by Afghan police. It is said that the soldiers were on security duty for a meeting when the two cowardly Afghani officers suddenly just opened fire on them. It is reported that one of the Afghans was killed in return fire by others and the second ran off at high speed. One British National Party spokesperson commented, Nick Griffin was right when he commented a long time ago to politicians in the European Parliament, send your own sons to die. Our thoughts are with the fallen and their families. One soldier was from the 1st Battalion Welsh Guards and the second was from the Royal Air Force. The British National Party will be launching its campaign to protect our children against Muslim groomers this summer. The Justice for Charlene campaign starts noon of Saturday, 9th of June, in Blackpool. Everybody is welcome to support the campaign, even if you're with the party or not. All nationalist activists are most welcome. It is the start of a bigger campaign to an independent public inquiry into the failure of councils, social services, police and the Crown Prosecution Service to deal with street grooming. A national turnout is needed by everybody to start this long, high-profile campaign. More news on venues, etc. at a later date. Abdul Rahman, 33, from Tower Hamlets, resigned from the Metropolitan Police after senior officers suspended him, acting on information given by MI5. He is alleged to have attended known fundamentalist madrasas in Pakistan. The information is thought to have come from a convicted terrorist, Sajid Mohammed Badat, 33, who was released from prison early after becoming a supergrass. Father of four, Rahman, is bringing an employment tribunal case against the Met for racial discrimination. A World Date reporter commented, Well, good luck with that one, Abdul. As you resigned on suspicion of being a terrorist mole, perhaps the Human Rights Act is right up your street, so to speak. Euronews. The Greeks are running around in panic again this week, not able to see the wood for the trees and their ever-decreasing fall into the black hole of the Euro. The Greek Parliament has now gone into overdrive trying to sort out a new government to try and save Greece from its failed economy. The heads of all the parties are wasting their time, one reporter commented. It's like putting your head in a bucket at the end of every possible solution, every time. A World Date reporter stated, I feel very sorry for the Greek people. They were unwittingly drawn into the Eurozone, having paid their dues in the past, but on joining the euro they, with other countries, devalued their own currency in favour of an artificial one and are paying the price now. The German people are not pleased with the idea of austerity measures, one report claims. After their elections, a survey of the German people showed uncertainty and an uneasy feeling towards their austerity measures and their Chancellor's way of running Germany. World News The communist state of North Korea's threat of nuclear aggression was apparently absent from the post-summit joint declaration this week. The Chinese, Japanese and the South Koreans decided not to bring up the issue of the communist North Korea's nuclear ambitions at the summit. The issue of North Korea's nuclear arsenal should have been on the main agenda at the summit, but has been excluded. Oh dear, rather like Turkey's avoiding Christmas. It has been reported from Nairobi that the Ugandan military have captured a commander of the Law's Resistance Army during an operation in the Central African Republic. Caesar Achelem was seized Saturday following a firefight with Ugandan forces. It is a major victory for the multinational forces combating the LRA across Central Africa. The LRA's leader, Joseph Kony, is funded by the Sudanese government. Thought for the day. So, Trevor of the highly paid idiot Quangos and the EHRC fame has come out with a statement on the Muslim grooming trial. Speaking on the BBC's Andrew Marr programme, he said, 
The most important thing is these men are criminals, these children are street kids. However, I think that most of the people that say the fact that most of the men are Asian and most of the children are white is not relevant. That's just fatuous. Well, as usual, he's wrong. Not all Muslims are sexual groomers, but most of this type of grooming is carried out by Muslims. Most of the victims of this nasty crime are white, but then many have been recorded as black, Asian, Hindu and Sikh, plus mixed-race youngsters. There is not a race link, but there is a religious link, insofar as none of the recorded victims have been Muslim. The media are now jumping on this very old bandwagon in a half-hearted manner because, of course, we must not offend the Muslim communities, many, if not all of which, contain these abusers. If they had listened to Nick Griffin and the British National Party years ago, these crimes would not have flourished these past years to the extent that they have. Many of these abusers go back generations, over 30 years in some northern Muslim enclaves. They are family money makers and also on the social sexual side relieve the Muslim wives of too many children with probably no available contraception. They know what their husbands, sons and brothers are doing, but it is endemic in Muslim society, slavery of one sort or another, especially amongst women and girls. These people bring their culture with them. It is in their religion. It is how they have lived for hundreds of years in many other countries, including their own. You will note that the media is revving up the fact that some of these girls have been vulnerable. In fact, if you believe these papers, most of them are. Logistics say no. Most have come from normal, middle-class homes. They are targeted leaving schools and within those schools by the younger, prime groomer. The media making them all vulnerable is just another way of saying that these youngsters were the junkies and prostitutes of tomorrow and maybe we as a society should be grateful to these paedophiles. Regarding the crop conference last November, I did find that although they do sterling work in helping the parents and the victims, the main point about the cultural and religious aspect of this particular form of grooming is totally ignored. In fact, the entire conference was scheduled to tie up with the Channel 4 Grooming Gangs programme, which was aired one week before the conference, and indeed the conference itself contained all the people that appeared on Channel 4, rather like a hands up and let us get our story straight, guys, because the shit really is starting to hit the fan and we must all sing from the same page. In one of the photos in the report, in a survivor's text, the guy was a young white guy posed by a model. Imam alias Kamani, who runs Street, short for Strategy to Reach, Educate and Empower Teenagers, and whose film, which showed at the conference and also on Channel 4, only showed young Muslim men around mid-twenties around him. He witted on the usual PC jargon about the fact he didn't want political correctness, he wanted open and mature dialogue that doesn't polarise the issue. That is, in Brit-speak, take away any reference to the Muslim community as they are here to enrich society. Oh boy. Apparently more men have been arrested in Rochdale on the information given by a vulnerable girl on the original Gang of Nine. This time they brought in some from the Afro-Caribbean community as well as the usual Asian. I can guarantee that from now on they will target multi-ethnic gangs who do not follow the exact rules of the Muslim grooming but the police will lump them all together as sexual predators to avoid actually upsetting the so-called relations between the two communities, Muslim and Christian, which, at best, are rocky. Mohammed Shafiq, chief executive of moderate Muslim think tank, the Ramadan Foundation, also of Channel 4 and the Crop Conference, said the problem of grooming should be revealed even if it galvanises racists. You would think this guy would know better, having been apparently heavily criticised by his own community for standing up for a couple of abused girls, which were in a reported incident four years ago, which everyone apparently knew about and did nothing. Well, he certainly isn't slipping off his fence this time with his we've got to reclaim the agenda from the BNP, he said. Race is a contributing factor and police have to confront it. We obviously have a problem with some Pakistani men criminals who engage in this behaviour, believing that white girls are worthless and they can use and abuse them in this way. No, race is not the contributing factor. It is money, sex and availability. You, Shafiq, are making it the contributing factor. Why? I can only think to spread the R word around to polarise the British National Party amongst many. It is not racist to want to halt this form of grooming. This form of grooming is relatively new to Britain. 
In large cities, we have always had paedophiles, sexual predators, prostitution. Only now we have to look closer to our own families and even at schools to nip it in the bud. Also, of course, one has to be particularly careful near the large Muslim ghettos. So the British National Party have not hijacked it. It was told to the media ten years ago by us. We were labelled racist and that label has not gone away. In fact, it is the media who are hijacking this now because they cannot do anything else. The cat is out of the bag. But the media, Phillips, Shafiq and other so-called Muslim moderates, will only say what they are told to say. They will whinge a bit and get all their facts wrong, but hell, they are having to be careful with a non-Muslim problem, aren't they, poor things? As long as the British media continue to alienate the Brits and cuddle up to child molesters, as long as anyone objecting to the reasons why this form of grooming goes on is labelled racist, you are not going to solve this problem. This is a problem brought on solely by immigration, by the huge numbers of Muslims of many ethnic groups onto a small island. Wake up and smell the coffee. Both Phillips and Shafiq are virtual Uncle Toms, paid by the establishment to ignore or to give misinformation about a very serious and ongoing crime. And finally, in Mexico it pays not to get involved in the dirty world of drug dealing, unless you want to lose your head. Police in Monterey, whilst casually driving along a quiet road, discovered dumped plastic bags. Thinking they were the usual litter bags just dumped there by fly tippers, when open to the horror of the police, they revealed human heads. The police later discovered that there was a total of nearly 50 heads from decapitated drug dealers who had just been involved in a drug war with a rival gang. Whether you take drugs or not, just getting involved with them can still kill you or get you off your head. Oh, I couldn't resist it. You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart and I wish you all a very good night.